Howdy. In this series, we're going to break gravitational motion up into three parts. And in this first part, what I want to do is I want to introduce the two laws of the two equations that we're going to use for uh, gravity, as well as do some basic examples. And we'll get progressively harder as the videos and as the examples go on. But the first thing I want you to do is uh, pause the video, jot this down, we'll talk about it, and then we're going to do several examples. So, taking a look at these two equations, the force, okay, the gravitational force between any two bodies of mass is going to be this capital G, m1 times m2, that's the two masses of the objects, divided by r squared. Now, that capital G is a gravitational constant. It is 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. Now, r, this is extremely important, r is the distance between the center of mass between m1 and m2. It's going to come into play within several problems. And then uh, if you want the potential energy between two objects, that's going to be a negative g, m1, m2 over r. And this energy is just the integral of your force with respect to r, is all that that is. Now, any two bodies will always attract each other. And so let's kind of start off with an easy example so we can introduce how to utilize especially that first equation. So in this first example, we have as masses A, B, and C are sitting on the x-axis. Mass A is going to be at x equals 0. Mass B is at x equals 3. And mass C is at x equals 7. Find the magnitude and direction of the net gravitational force on mass B. So I'm doing my free body diagram on mass B due to the other two masses. And let's just say all the masses are going to be 2 kilograms. Now, what did I say earlier? Any two bodies of mass will attract each other. So let's say that A and C are held in place. Then the force that B feels from A will point to the left. And the force that B feels from C will point to the right, since both A and C are both attracting mass B. So let's find this first one. The force that B feels from A. The reason this is negative is because it's pointing in the negative direction. This force is a vector, so direction must be taken into account. This is going to be your negative g, the mass of b, mass of a over r squared, where the distance between a and b is simply just 3. So when I plug in all my numbers, this is going to be the force that b feels from a. Likewise, if I want to find the force that B feels from C, that's going to be a positive force. It'll be a positive force since this force is pointed in the positive direction. And once again, utilizing this equation, that's going to be my gravitational constant G, and then mass of B, mass of C over R squared. But now that R, the distance between B and C, is now 4. And so I plugged all those numbers in the calculator. This is what I got. So if I want the net gravitational force, I'm going to do the, I'm just going to sum these two forces together. And so the net force is F, you know, AB, FCB, does, order doesn't matter, just it's between A and B and between B and C. And when I add them together, I come out to a negative value, a negative 1.29 times 10 to the negative 11. And what this tells me is that the magnitude of that force is 1.29 times 10 to the negative 11 newtons. It's just that the direction is pointed in the negative direction of my axis. Okay, So here's a nice easy example to start off. But let's get a little bit tougher. Let's get a little bit more creative. Okay, So let's take a look at number two. So number two, it says that your mom is so fat that objects 5 meters away accelerate at 1 meter per second towards her, what is your mama's mass? Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and utilize my force equation. We know that force, F, is equal to G, M1, M2, over R squared. And what I'm going to say is that your mama has a mass M2, and let's just say the object that's accelerating towards her has a mass m1. This mass m1 is accelerating, and so the force on that m1 is going to be m1 times a. And this is going to equal that capital G, m1 m2 over r squared. And now all we need to do is solve for m2. 
Notice how these M1s are going to cancel. And so what I would get is I would get that M2 is equal to, let's see, you're going to have an A times an R squared divided by capital G. And so A is 1 meter per second squared. R is 5 meters away, so 5 meters. And then G is your gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11. And so I threw that into my calculator earlier and got 3.75 times 10 to the 11 kilograms. So based on this calculation, she's got to be pretty dense. Anyways, so that's going to be number two. Let's take a look at number three. So number three, at what distance above the Earth is the acceleration due to gravity 0 0.98 meters per second squared? Okay, once again, uh, we're gonna, let's just say we're standing some distance above the Earth, and we're going to be M1. And we'll say the mass of the Earth, we'll call this M2. And there's a couple of things you need to know. So mass of the Earth, I looked this up earlier. Mass of the Earth is 5 0.97 times 10 to the 24 kilograms and the radius of the earth we're going to need that as well is 6.38 times 10 to the 6 meters okay so let's start off by writing our equation I know that F is equal to G M1 M2 over R squared and the type of force Let's say I would be feeling, if I was going to be M1, um, is a gravitational force. And so we're going to say that M1 times G is equal to capital G, M1. We know M2, that's going to be the mass of the Earth. Mass of the Earth over R squared. Now something you need to note is this R squared, this R is not the radius of the Earth. Remember, what did I say R was? R is the distance between the center of masses between M1 and M2. And so if I know the radius of the Earth, and I'm looking for that distance, what this capital R is within my equation, this is going to be the sum between the radius of the Earth and my distance. And so when I'm looking for the distance above the surface of the Earth, that D is what I'm looking for. What I'm going to do is I'm going to say that D is equal to the R that I find in my equation minus the radius of the Earth. And so with that being said, let's go ahead and find R. Let's find the distance between, let's just say I'm standing there, and the center of the Earth. That's going to be that capital R. So let's see. M1s are going to cancel. And so you're going to have that R. R is going to be the square root of capital G times the mass of the earth over that little g, which will be the square root. That capital G is our gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to negative 11. Mass of the earth, we know, is 5.97 times 10 to the 24 divided by, I want my little g to be 0 0.98. 0.98 meters per second squared. I threw all that into my calculator earlier and got 2.02 .02 times 10 to the 7 meters. Now that ain't my final answer because that's the distance between the center of mass and that point. If I want the distance above the surface of the earth, the distance d will be r minus the radius of the earth and so this would be your 2.02 .02 times 10 to the 7 meters, minus the radius of the Earth, uh, we said was 6.38, times 10 to the 6. And I threw that into my calculator earlier as well, and got 1.38, times 10 to the 7 meters. Cool. Let's take a look at a couple more examples. Okay, so let's now take a look at number four. So with the number four, it says, what is the orbital velocity required to keep a satellite some distance d above the surface of the Earth? And so once again, 
I'm going to start off with my equation. Okay, my F is equal to capital G, M1, M2, over R squared. And this time, I'm looking for an orbital velocity. So that means that this satellite is orbiting the Earth. It's going through a circular motion. And so what's going to happen is this satellite is experiencing a centripetal force. Your centripetal force, we'll call the satellite M1, I'm going to call the Earth M2. What's going to happen is that centripetal acceleration, that centripetal force is M1 times V squared over R is equal to that capital G. M1, M2 over R squared. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to solve for that V. So notice how if I multiply the R over, this R will cancel with one of the R's over there. This M1 will cancel with that M1. I get that V is equal to the square root of capital G M2 over R. This would be the equation for your orbital velocity, which we know M2 is the mass of the Earth. And R sure as heck ain't D. It sure as heck ain't the radius of the Earth. That R is the sum of those two. Your final answer, your orbital velocity, is going to be the square root of capital G times the mass of the Earth divided by that R is the distance between the center of mass divided by the radius of the Earth plus that distance D above. The last thing that I want to talk about is escape velocity. So once again, pause the video just for a sec, jot this down, we'll talk about it, and then we'll do this example. Okay, so with this example, uh, escape velocity, escape velocity occurs the moment when the kinetic energy and the potential energy between those two objects is equal to zero. And so we know the potential energy between two objects is this negative g, m1, m2 over r. So we know kinetic energy is one-half mv squared, and we're going to say that an object that's trying to escape is m1. So I'll have one-half m1 times your escape velocity squared minus your g m1 m2 over r is equal to zero. And I just do a little bit of algebra to solve for that escape velocity. And this m2 represents the mass of the object you're trying to escape from. And r is going to be the radius of that same object. So with that being said... Um, on your exam or within a quiz, you can either memorize this equation, but I'm guessing that they're going to want you to derive it. Okay, so during homeworks, just plug and chug. Uh, but during an exam, go ahead and show your professors that you know how this equation is derived, and then go ahead and solve the problem. So for number five, it says, what is the escape velocity for an asteroid with a diameter of 265 kilometers, got to put that in meters, and I don't care about the diameter, care more about the radius, and a density of 2300 kilograms per cubic meter. We'll notice I need a mass and I need a radius. Let's find radius real quick. Okay, so my radius is going to be half of that, and I'm going to put that into meters. And when I did, I got 1.325 times 10 to the fifth meters. Okay, so I have my radius. The last thing I need is my mass. And notice how your density. Your density is in kilograms per cubic meter. This is 2,300 kilograms per cubic meter, and that is mass, right, kilograms, divided by volume, that's cubic meters. Now out in space, we're going to assume that this asteroid is a sphere. So the volume of a sphere is four-thirds pi r cubed. And so if I wanted to find the mass, if I wanted to find the mass of this object, I'm just going to multiply 2300 by my volume. So mass is going to be 2300 kilograms per cubic meter times my volume, 4 over 3 pi times my r, 1.325 times 10 to the fifth meters cubed. I threw all that into my calculator earlier and got 2.24 times 10 to the 19 kilograms. And now that I have R and now that I have M, I can find my escape velocity. And so my escape velocity, which is going to be the square root 
of 2 G M2 over R is going to be the square root of 2 times 6.67 times 10 to negative 11 M2 2.24 times 10 to the 19 divided by R that's 1.325 times 10 to the 5th and whenever I threw all of that into my calculator earlier I ended up getting about 150 meters per second. Okay, So go ahead, join me in the next video, and what we'll do is we'll talk about elliptical orbits.